this video, I'll be predicting the NBA's 2020-21 Eastern and Western Conference standings. A ton of blockbuster deals have been completed this offseason, most recently the Rockets trading Westbrook for John Wall, and the Bucks surrendering three first-round picks in their entire core to acquire former All-Star and defensive team player Drew Holiday. Stay tuned to see both how the 2020 offseason affected where your favorite team stacks up and why you should be hyped for the 2021 campaign. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to DFlow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, welcome aboard. You came to the right place. Please subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time I post new content, which is at least twice a week. Comments or shout out to Cardick answering the question by saying he's most excited to see Steph Curry as his team's number one option again, giving a great answer. The speaks board resets and everyone goes back to zero at the end of 2020 and the top five get awards. The question's coming up for next video shout out. 15, the Oklahoma City Thunder. After stunning the basketball world by finishing as the fifth seed and losing in a seven game battle to the Houston Rockets in the first round, the Thunder have traded away Chris Paul, Steven Adams, and made every move that screams rebuild. It's unclear if Trevor Ariza and George Hill will remain on the roster before being traded. Even with them, the young future driven Thunder have the worst projection in the West. 14, the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Timberwolves want to win, and their core has something to prove. Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, and Anthony Edwards project as a potent offensive nucleus, and Malik Beasley is back to provide some fire on the wing, but it's the lack of defense and go-to scoring around D loading and cat that makes the Wolves not quite ready to compete. But I like the move to bring back Ricky Rubio to the city where he was drafted. Ricky should be a stabilizing backcourt presence on both ends. They're not there quite yet, but with the potential of Anthony Edwards, the Wolves could be a problem in a few years, but this year I think they'll be the 14th seed. 13, the Sacramento Kings. The Kings lost their starting shooting guard in Bogdan Bogdanovich to the Hawks, who was a restricted free agent. But because Sacktown upgraded their depth this offseason, I think they'll be around a 500 team. The Kings added veteran free agents Glenn Robinson III and Hassan Whiteside. And their first round pick Tyrese Halliburton was a great pick, and the point guard looks unusually capable of contributing immediately. It's really the Wolves, Kings, and the four teams you're about to see that prove how historically deep the Western Conference is. You could make a case for any one of them making the playoffs. 12, the San Antonio Spurs. A team based around a pick and pop post fading big in LaMarcus Aldridge, plus a mid range shooting marksman and an all time great dunker in DeMar DeRozan. The Spurs re signed Jakob Pertle this offseason and drafted Devin Vessel. Steps forward for any of the DeJounte Murray, Keldon Johnson, Lonnie Walker trio could position them to rebuild on the fly, but the Spurs find themselves in limbo a bit for the time being. 11, the New Orleans Pelicans. Brandon Ingram extending with the New Orleans Pelicans feels inevitable. Trading Drew Holiday for three first rounders and two pick swaps continue to set the Pels up splendidly for the future, while the additions of Bloodsoe and Adams will help the team compete for a playoff spot right now. We should see 2019's number one pick Zion Williamson take a step forward in his production after the former Duke Phenom had a very solid rookie campaign. 10. The Memphis Grizzlies They lost to the Blazers in the playoff play-in game last season, but Memphis will have an even more difficult path in their attempt to reach the playoffs in 2020-21 due to the significant improvement elsewhere in the West. This should be an even 500 team at the very least as the rising Morant and Jackson Jr. should be even more dominant, but again, this shows the monster depth of this conference. 9. The Phoenix Suns D-Book, CP3, and DeAndre Ayton get the Suns into the play-in tournament where they'd have to take two games on the next ranked team in order to get in. If they did make the playoffs, their star power is so lethal that it could potentially lead them to a series upset. I just think Phoenix's younger players will have inconsistencies this year, and they'll come up just short of the playoffs, but this is arguably a top 6-8 to eight seed, and the Suns were one of the top winners of this past offseason. Speaking of offseason winners, 8. The Portland Trailblazers bulking their wing depth with the additions of Rocco and Derrick Jones Jr. while also bringing back Ennis Cantor in free agency. Portland's given Damon CJ some formidable support. Given Portland also re-signed Rodney Hood and Carmelo Anthony, their wing depth is too stacked not to put them in the playoffs. 
A full season from Yusuf Nurkic is also going to make Portland damn dangerous, and regardless of how far they go in the playoffs, a playoff appearance in this deep Western Conference is an accomplishment in itself. 7. The Dallas Mavericks Just like the 8th seeded Blazers, adding athletic wing defenders was clearly a top priority on the Mavs offseason list. Dallas picked up Josh Richardson, who's going to slide in nicely alongside Luka Doncic and Tim Hardaway Jr. Doncic is well positioned for another superstar leap in year three. The sky's the limit for Dallas, but the only thing is, can Chris Tapps Porzingis stay healthy? 6. The Golden State Warriors I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of analysts under the assumption that Steph Curry's going to get hurt again when making their standings predictions. For example, ESPN predicted the Warriors as the 14th seed, guaranteeing that the 32-year-old sharpshooter is going to get hurt. Even with Clay's recent injury, the trades for Wiggins and Oubre and drafting James Wiseman should help out Golden State a ton. But the doubting of Steph reminds me of when after Curry's third year about nine years ago when he played only 26 games due to ankle injuries and people were calling him injury prone and therefore a bust. After that 2011-12 season, Curry broke out into the iconic worldwide athlete he is to this day and I'm predicting the chef is going to prove everyone wrong again and lead the dubs to the postseason. 5. The Denver Nuggets They're led by as promising a star duo as any in the league in Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. They're going to get Will Barton back, and they made solid high upside additions through the draft, nabbing Najee and Hampton in the 20s, an international market, signing a passing maestro in Compazzo, but in Grant and Craig, two important wing defenders have skipped town. Retaining Millsap and signing Jermichael Green in light of Grant's departure was solid work, and they're still neck and neck with Utah on paper, but this offseason didn't play out how Denver envisioned. For the Houston Rockets, who knows exactly what's left of the five-time All-Star John Wall, but based off the workouts he's been doing for several months now, it seems like Houston will be getting a very good version of the Kentucky product. Speaking of Kentucky, DeMarcus Cousins will join his former college teammate in Wall as Boogie was signed by the Rockets, but more notably, Harden's getting a backcourt partner in John Wall, who's debatably the best assist guy in the league when he's healthy, and who's also a better three-point shooter than Russ. I think the Rockets were the clear winner of the Brody slash Wall deal. They also brought in coveted free agent forward Christian Wood, and they still have a top wing defender in the league in P.J. Tucker. 3. The Utah Jazz The D. Mitch Rudy Gobert led Jazz have brought back Derek Favors and two rooks and appear to be running back last year's construction. And there's worse plans to have than that. This is a team that without their second leading scorer in Boyan Bogdanovich took the Nuggets who went to the conference finals to the final possession of a game seven in the 2020 West Conference first round. Boyan returning and Donovan Mitchell taking another big leap puts Utah firmly in the mix for a top three seed in the West. Two, the LA Clippers. A second round exit was an inexcusable result for last season's Clippers, but they still enter this year with as loaded a roster as anyone in the league. Perhaps with a new coaching staff, the veteran additions of Serge Ibaka, who brings elite floor spacing and rim protection, plus adding Luke Kennard, who's coming off the best statistical season of his career, the Clippers will finally live up to their potential. The Clips also brought back Marcus Morris, so they should be set for a great year. 1. The LA Lakers The rich get richer. Fresh off a title, the Lakers infamously improved their roster this offseason, swapping Danny Green for Dennis Schroeder, fortifying their wing rotation by bringing in Wesley Matthews and re-signing Contavious Caldwell-Pope, plus adding Montrez Harrell and Marc Gasol to their front court. With the best superstar duo in the league, the Lakers' quest to repeat begins on December 22nd, and I can't wait to see it. Moving on to the East, where the 15th seed is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Isaac Okoro reminds me of a bigger Oladipo and should fit nicely to Garland and Sexton. Given the team needed athleticism desperately, he was a great pick for the Cavs, but not much other than that has changed for a Cleveland team that won just 19 games in 2019-20. Cleveland still in stage one of development and didn't upgrade their roster in free agency. A jump from Colin Sexton or Darius Garland could affect their fortunes, but I think they'll look to move Kevin Love at some point. They've won just 19 games in each of the last two seasons since making four consecutive trips to the NBA Finals. 14. The New York Knicks 
The Knicks are in asset stacking mode and doing a decent job of it, bringing in Alec Burks, Nerlens Noel, Austin Rivers, Amari Spellman, and Jacob Adams while drafting Obi Toppin. I really like that selection. But new coach Tom Thibodeau's first roster won't look drastically better than last season's Knicks. If Toppin pops and RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson break out, the Knicks could take a step forward, but as it stands, they have a slight talent deficiency. 13, the Detroit Pistons. Jeremy Grant was a solid pickup, but he actually had a minus 0.7 real plus minus when he was on the floor for the Nuggets last year. However, Grant did play well in the playoffs for Denver and is a solid 3 and D wing. Overall though, Motor City's basketball team is the most directionless franchise in the NBA, with an aging Blake Griffin and Derrick Rose surrounded by an underwhelming cast of talent. 12, the Chicago Bulls. After a ton of change in the front office with Mark Eversley becoming GM back in May and in the new coaching staff with Billy Donovan taking over for the disgraced Jim Boylan, the Bulls personnel stayed almost exactly the same this offseason. They're currently on pace to return 13 players from 2019-20's 15-man roster that produced only 22 wins in 65 games. The team's five most important players in Zach Levine, Kobe White, Lori Markin, and Wendell Carter Jr. and Patrick Williams are all 25 or under, all 23 and under discounting Levine. You could make the case that the Bulls' internal development could make them better. Unfortunately, they were lapped by other teams in their Eastern Conference tier during free agency. 11. The Charlotte Hornets Although it wasn't overpay to give them $120 million, signing Hayward lifts Charlotte out of the bottom tier of teams in the East and gives the Hornets a better shot at reaching this season's play-in tournament. It's not enough to make the Hornets a favorite for their first playoff berth since 2016. The Hornets, Wizards, and Bulls were all around neck and neck last season, but the Hornets did the most to immediately improve their roster this offseason. Number three overall pick LaMelo Ball can change the personality of games with his scoring and facilitating. Plus, Gordon Hayward affects winning as an efficient scorer and passer from the wing spot if he can stay healthy. They still need an upgrade at center, but Charlotte's got a solid young core with Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier, Miles Bridges, PJ Washington, and of course now the big baller and Hayward. 10. The Orlando Magic after two years in the playoffs, Orlando projects to take a slight step back because of the loss of veteran point guard DJ Augustine, who's replaced by rookie Cole Anthony, and the season-long absence of budding forward Jonathan Isaac due to a torn ACL suffered in the bubble seeding games. 9. The Washington Wizards The combination of Westbrook and Beal's damn interesting, something I'm really looking forward to seeing. But internal improvement from Thomas Bryant, Rui Hachimura, and Troy Brown Jr. should make the Wizards much more competitive than they were last season. But I'm still projecting them to finish 9th. But to surpass this projection and make the postseason, Washington has to improve on a defense that ranked 29th in efficiency last year. 8. The Indiana Pacers The Pacers appear relatively content to run it back under new coach and former Raptor assistant Nate Bjorgren. There's been swirling rumors around Victor Oladipo's status, which could be a dark cloud over the team, that is if he's not dealt before the season, but Oladipo, Malcolm Brogdon, DeMontis Sabonis, and Miles Turner isn't a championship core, however it is amply competitive in the East. 7. The Atlanta Hawks The Hawks are on the rise, having deployed their abundance of cap space to have a stellar 2020 offseason. Coming off consecutive career seasons, Gallinari and Bogdanovich should flourish playing off Trey Young. Chris Dunn and Rajon Rondo should bolster their shaky perimeter defense. 2020's 6th overall pick on Yeka Okongwu should also develop into a long-term defensive anchor down low, even if his play style's kind of redundant with Clint Capella for the time being. All these additions for ATL within the last year have almost assured them a playoff spot in 2020, and they'll be a dangerous first-round opponent for anyone. It'll be awesome to see Trey Young make his first postseason appearance. 6. The Brooklyn Nets Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, plus Karis LeVert is a damn dangerous trio, and you can argue Brooklyn could be a top 3 seed because of that, but like the entirety of the Western Conference, the top of the East in 2020 is extremely tough, and it has a ton of giants fighting for top positions. I worry about Durant's rustiness, 
he and the other two players who thrive with the ball in their hands, chemistry, and the overall depth of the roster other than Harris and Dinwiddie. But Uncle Drew and the Snake is a duo that us fans have been waiting forever to watch, so I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see how it plays out in Brooklyn. 5. The Philadelphia 76ers Debatably the winner of the 2020 offseason, Philly traded Al Horford, his insane cap hit, Josh Richardson, and future draft assets for Danny Green, Seth Curry, and Terrence Ferguson, addressing the team's desperate need for perimeter shooting without sacrificing too much defensively. They also added reigning champion Dwight Howard to the mix, so the Sixers get much better. Hopefully Ben and Joel stay healthy. For the Toronto Raptors, based in Tampa this year, the Raptors will have to respond to unforeseen circumstances for a second straight season. Last year, it was making up for the loss of their best player to free agency in Kawhi Leonard, and this year, it's being forced to play home games in a different country and climate that they're accustomed to. I'm sure they won't complain about the sun, though. But if there's any NBA squad that can pull through in unforeseen circumstances with their leadership and depth positions 1 through 4, it's this Raptor team. Serge Ibaka's rim protection and floor spacing is a big loss for them, so the Raps don't rank any higher than 4th, but I think Norman Powell and or Ananobi break out for them, Siakam bounces back in a non-bubble environment, and Van Fleet and the Bulldog Lowry lead the Raps to the fourth seed in 2021. 3. The Miami Heat You can bet that Bam, Butler, Harrow, and nearly an identical Heat core from 2020 will not only be extremely hungry to get back to the finals, but to win it all this time. Even though they lost Jay Crowder, Miami signed Avery Bradley, which was an under-talked-about pickup, and they still have one of the better three-point snipers in the game in Duncan Robinson. Veterans Igadala and Dragic should also play a crucial role for Miami, and I really like their recent 20th overall pick, Precious Achua. Two, the Boston Celtics. Expect Jason Tatum to build off a season where he averaged just under 24 points per game by putting up around 30 per night in the 2021 NBA season. Walker will be out for the first few weeks of the year with a left knee injury, but I think Boston's young duo can pick up the slack offensively. Daniel Tyson, Robert Williams III is a very solid center rotation, and you've even got the fan favorite Taco Fall as the third string. The Celts still have some other pieces to their core in Marcus Smart, Semi Ojale, Grant Williams, as well as Carson Edwards and Romeo Lankford returning to the roster. Additionally, Boston signed Tristan Thompson and Jeff Teague, plus they drafted the best three-point shooter in the 2020 draft in Aaron Nesmith. One, the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer has made it clear publicly that the 2021 NBA season is championship or bust for the Milwaukee Bucks organization. With the departure of Giannis looming, it's crucial that Milwaukee gets through their conference and into the finals next year. And the deals they made this offseason were very impressive win-now moves. Holiday's a two-time All-NBA defensive team player, a former All-Star, a guy who's night and day significantly better than George Hill or Eric Bledsoe. Now the Bucks have a three-headed monster in the Greek Freak, plus two All-Stars in Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. Also, Milwaukee didn't have to give up Brooke Lopez. And to bolster their bench, they stole DJ Augustine, signing him from Orlando, and brought in a nice young scorer from San Antonio and Bryn Forbes. If Giannis can make all those pieces better and stay on his path in the playoffs, Milwaukee could be looking at its first ring since 1971. The question for next video shoutout is, which team are you most hyped about in 2021? Make sure you're following your boy on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops to be friends and to stay updated on the channel that's at dflowhoops, but you're the best for sticking around and supporting the channel. This was dflow, keep watching some of my recent uploads, and I'll see you next video.